Hi, everybody. How about that? Feedback. Did everybody have a good break? If we could have you guys come back to your seats, please. We're getting ready to start our next session with our next speaker, and you're not going to want to miss this one. Let's get a show, uh, well, let's get a little applause. How many of you like the sage? He did great, right? What about Tommy Laren and Brandon Strack? All right, well, we are glad you're having a good time. And again, all day long, we have been thanking our sponsors for making the sixth annual Unite IE Conservative Conference such a success. And I want to spend, extend a special thank you to one of my buddies, one of my favorite guys. He actually, watch out, I'm packing. He gave me my first, well, he didn't give it to me. I bought it. But he gave, I purchased my handgun from Vince Torres over here, owner of Bullseye Sport Guns and Ammo in Riverside. If you need anything, Vince is the guy. I, they have everything, and it's so easy and it's not intimidating, and for women, I know that's a big deal. When you walk into a guns and ammo store, you want to feel like someone is going to be able to help you. And they even do NRA training, which I had the opportunity to do. We're going to do a redo on that. So thank you to Vince. If you don't own a firearm for recreation or protection, Bullseye is where you need to go. Bullseye is a place for first-time gun owners, and especially us ladies needing a comfortable place to ask questions and not feel intimidated. They will help you find the firearm that fits you and get the training you need to handle it safely. Bullseye Sport, where the Inland Empire gets its guns and ammo. And really, truly, if you're interested, ladies or gentlemen, go do the NRA training. It's fantastic. It's eight hours classroom and range training, and it's a lot of fun. Then my mom, who's here, did it, and she's like a dead eye. All right. Who's ready for our next speaker? Now, Rebecca Friedrichs may look familiar to you. She is the face of a national movement to restore the voices and authority of parents and teachers in America's schools. This is where our movement must begin, is on the campuses of schools all across California. As a 28-year public school teacher, she was forced to fund state and national teachers' unions where politics and divisive tactics degraded her profession, our schools, universities, and our national character. Her seminal lawsuit, Friedrichs versus California Teachers Association, sought to free educators and all public sector employees from forced unionism, and it was argued before the U.S. Supreme Court. How about that? She is such a fighter. They ruled five to four in Rebecca's favor. The court was deadlocked after the sudden passing of Justice Scalia. So that's where that ended. Now, determined to stop state and national teachers unions from destroying the schools, universities, and American values, sensing millions of like-minded supporters were stunned and discouraged, Rebecca refused to give up. She is here to tell you about her fight. This is so important. She has a brand new book that's out. It's out called Standing Up to Goliath. It's right here. Please help me welcome to the stage, Rebecca Friedrichs. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's so great to be here. Um, I wish I was here to talk to you about something really positive, but I'm here today to educate you on what's going on in America's schools specifically the sex education. And the reason I have been given the honor of doing that is as you'll discover from my talk, the people at fault for this horrific sexual education is the teachers unions. So I am going to start with an apology today, especially to you men, I'm going to be saying things I never dreamed I would say even in private, but I'm going to say them in front of you today. If you have small children in the room, take them out, because I'm not holding back, because we all need to hear what's being taught. So there's something called Comprehensive Sexuality Education, or CSE, that has been invading our schools across the nation, not just California. 
It's been pushed through the UN for about 20 years now. CSE and other gender identity requirements became law on January 1st, 2016, here in California, first state to make it a law, through AB 329, the California Healthy Youth Act. I'd like to share with you just some highlights of some of the contents that are inside of the six curriculums that have been approved for the California Healthy Youth Act. I'll start with this one. In 2013, I received an email from a mother. Her email was titled, The Latest Horror. That horror was a curriculum being used in her daughter's fifth grade classroom. It was written by Planned Parenthood. It's called Making Proud Choices. It's still one of the six here in California. First thing she pointed out to me was a lesson called the condom relay races. I read it for myself. I felt sexually violated reading this curriculum. So I'll describe the condom relay races to you. In this game, game in quotes, the teacher is directed to teach the children how to use a condom using her arm. She's told to teach them all the steps in condom use. She's then told to tell the children to line up in two teams, two, you know, like a relay race. Did I mention these were 11 year olds? And did I mention this was in mixed company, boys and girls together? Line them up, relay race. Now the teacher's instructed to bring out two anatomically correct, fully erect adult male penis models and to place them on the table in front of those little babies. Now the children are supposed to play the relay race. First two kids run up, they put the condom on the penis and they have to state all the steps in using a condom. Then they run back to the next kid in line and slap them a high five, and now it's the next child's turn to be sexually abused in a classroom in America. 11-year-olds. The teacher is told, quote, make it a fun game. That's just one game. Teachers are now being instructed in California on the use of dental dams. We are told you probably don't know what a dental dam is. I didn't know until I had to look it up and was horrified. So a dental dam is a piece of vinyl, about this long, and dentists use it for oral surgery. Our schools think it's a good idea to have teachers instruct children that a dental dam is to be used as a shield between their mouth and their partner's vagina, vulva, or anus for oral on anal sex. 11 and 12 year olds. Next, we are told that we are supposed to teach these children their sexual rights and that they have the right to get birth control, including the morning after pill and abortion without parental knowledge or parental permission beginning at age 12. It's an outrage. One last highlight. There are now these new gender identity requirements. The gender identity can start in preschool. If your child is in a government-run preschool, K-18, any government-run school, government-run after-school daycare program, any of them, they could learn this. Teacher says to the children, not boys and girls, we're not allowed to call them that anymore. Students, imagine three-year-olds, students, when you were born, your mommy and daddy didn't know your gender. So they assigned a gender to you. And the truth is, students, that there is a spectrum of genders, 30, 40, 50, ever growing, I've seen as many as 70 genders. And our children are told that they'll figure out their gender someday. And then they're told, and this is the part that makes me the, the angriest. Oh, parents are all hung up on genders, but we know better. You know, 
This is an outright attack on parental authority. It's an outright attack on the innocence of children. And it's an outright attack on our religious rights because God said he created us male and female. So they're even attacking our religious rights. Now, teachers tell me, well, no big deal, Rebecca. I won't teach that. Well, you know, the teachers unions and their friends who wrote these laws knew that great teachers wouldn't teach this stuff. So they wrote into the law that if a teacher is unqualified or unwilling to teach it, the experts are brought in and Planned Parenthood will abuse the kids. So LGBT people sometimes get upset with me for, for speaking about this. This is not about you. This is not about you. This is about protecting childhood innocence. I'm a teacher and I am a mother, and it is my job and it is my calling to protect children. And if I didn't speak out about this, there would be something seriously wrong with me. Um, for 200 years, teachers and parents in America partnered. We were partners in education. We taught Judeo-Christian values in America's schools. Why? Because our American founders said two things were vital to a free republic. One, an educated citizenry. Two, a moral citizenry. Because of that, they brought Judeo-Christian values, including the Bible, from the Judeo-Christian Bible into America's schools. And I'm going to prove it to you today. Today, I brought a copy of a McGuffey's Reader. Some of you may have heard of McGuffey. McGuffey's readers were used in our schools in the 1800s all the way to 1960s. By the way, the 1960s is when the unions showed up and removed all of our values. I'm going to read to you one little lesson from the primer, which is basically like a kindergarten reader. Do you see that tall tree? Long ago, it sprang up from a small nut. Do you know who made it do so? It was God, my child. God made the world and all things in it. He made the sun to light the day and the moon to shine at night. God shows that he loves us by all that he has done for us. Should we not love him? America's schools. There's Bible verses in there too. Then in the 1800s, middle 1800s, a group of teachers started something called the National Education Association or NEA. And the NEA existed to bring those values into our classrooms. And they created these little books. They're called Selections for Memorizing. And I, this was sent to me by a teacher. Teachers were told to memorize these and to buy copies for one penny each and to teach all of their students, every single grade level, to memorize these booklets. This was printed by the National Education Association Here's the morning prayer that was supposed to be said every day in second grade. Put my glasses down so I can see. Be with me, Lord, as here I pray, and keep me by thy side today. Please make me gentle, pure, and true, and kind in all I say and do, honest in every word and deed, and quick to help when others need. Oh, how we need that in our schools again. Yeah. Yeah, the other thing on this page is the Lord's Prayer. And the next one is all things great and small, all things bright and beautiful. The Lord God made them all. Uh, that's what was taught in America's schools. What I just read to you is the heart of true teachers. Teachers who really are called to be in the classroom. Not union activists, teachers. That's our heart. Those are teacher values. By the way, separation of church and state, not in the Constitution. Another lie. So my question today is what happened? How did we get from McGuffey readers to condom relay races, dental dams, attacks on God and parents? Well, in the 1960s, teachers were unionized. And they weren't just unionized because they wanted to be unionized. A few did. A few wanted it. But for the most part, mafia tactics were used to bully teachers into joining the union. 
And ever since then, our schools and our values have fallen apart. Every word that has been spoken up here today by Tommy or by Larry Elder, I was sitting back in my seat going, yeah, the teachers unions caused that one too. They caused that one too. They're behind it all. They're the root. So I'm going to show you some proof. This first slide that's up is your homework today. I'm a teacher, can't help myself. You're all getting homework today. And I have the homework. It's called Adopt a Teacher, and it's at our book table. And if you lose it or your dog eats it, no problem. You can get it on our website. So no one's off the hook. Everyone gets homework. So can you advance to the next slide for me? The little clicker's not working, so they're going to advance for me. So I told you about the California Healthy Youth Act. These are the bill sponsors in California on all that sex ed. ACLU, no surprise, California Latinas, Forward Together, Equality California, and Planned Parenthood. Next slide. Here's the one that shocks people, Coalition of Supporters, California School Boards Association, the California Teachers Association, and the California State PTA. If you're in the PTA, get out. Because most of your money goes up. I can't tell you all the details today. It's in my book. The teachers unions corrupted the PTA. They're no longer sticking up for the kids. Next slide. Uh, this is a resolution. Teachers unions have a resolution document. It's kind of like their constitution. I just want you to look at the highlighted part. This is their sex ed resolution. Teachers and health professionals must be qualified to teach in this area and must be legally protected from censorship and lawsuits. Why would they want that? Next slide. Unless we wanted to sue them. Look at B. They insist on diversity of sexual orientation and sexual identity. Next. Look at the highlighted part. They say it needs to be age appropriate and medically accurate. It is not, let's sue them. It, they want us to push lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender issues, and it has to include sexuality, sexual orientation, gender expression. Schools are for learning, reading, writing, arithmetic, good character, values, and a history. Next slide, please accurate history, by the way, but the teachers unions have decided to turn our schools into social, sexual, and political war zones. And I'll tell you how you stop every problem you heard on this stage today. You get teachers to stop funding unions, and you help them to understand that the unions are not their friend. And we get unions out of our schools, and every other problem will go away. This is a magazine by the California Teachers Association, I was forced to fund my entire career. And you can see they're embracing the gender spectrum, the 70 different genders. Next slide. Um, how do they get away with this stuff? Well, they twist the truth. This is an amendment adopted by the teachers union. They have changed the scientific method. The part I hide it in yellow for you is what they have struck out. So they've removed empirical evidence, and all the most important parts of the scientific method, they've changed it to the part I highlighted for you in green. Scientific theory, empirically collected evidence, and all of this, scientific consensus. Let me tell you what this means. The teachers unions are the ones pushing global warming, evolution as a fact, um, all these spectrums of genders as a fact, all the things you fight, basically, uh, they push as a fact, not a theory. So they have decided that if their scientists consents and say this is consensus, then it's truth. And those of us here that say, that's not true, that's a theory. Well, well you're a, a bigot and a homophobe and all these names they call us. So it's only their scientific consensus. Next slide. How do they enforce this? This is the most important slide of the day. This is an adopted business item. You will note that the teachers unions, NEA, work in partnership with Southern Poverty Law Center. NAACP, ACLU, Gelson, that's Gay, Lesbian, Straight Education Network, National Center for Trans Equality, Human Rights, blah, 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 blah. You can read that for yourself. Teachers unions are writing the talking points, homophobia, transphobe, all that stuff. They've written it. What's their goal? To eradicate hate, they say. The problem is you and I are the haters. They are eradicating us. The hate is Judeo-Christian values. They are eradicating that. So this is how, and, and I know y'all have probably heard about Southern Poverty Law Center, but just in case, let's take a look at the next slide. They created a hate map, and their hate map now has over a thousand different groups on it, and if you clicked on their hate map, you'd see a whole map of the country with different groups listed on it. The problem is 
Every group on their map is either Christian, Catholic, conservative, Republican, Jewish, anyone fighting for Judeo-Christian values, anyone who dares to say that there are only two genders or I happen to believe that the marriage is between a man and a woman. If you believe that, you're considered a hater. That's wrong. That's totalitarian. Next page. These are just 10 of the groups, 10, that are on the hate list right now. Take a look down that list. I'll bet you know some of those people, especially Pacific Justice Institute. That's our own Brad Dacus, local guy. Uh, the Pray in Jesus Name Project sounds pretty scary to me. And you'll notice that the Border Patrol is on there, American Border Patrol and San Diegans for Secure Borders. It's because the teachers unions and their friends are the ones behind our immigration problems too. Next slide. This is just a picture from the California Teachers Association website. How do they enforce all of this? Well, they created a toolkit. This toolkit was created by that coalition of bullies I showed you, Southern Poverty Law Center, ACLU, and the teachers unions. Uh, this toolkit, whoops, go back to that one real quick. This toolkit's actually called a social justice toolkit for kids. Next slide. Here's some of the posters teachers can hang in their classroom. You can find this on the CTA website if you want to see the whole thing. Just look at the kind of things they're pushing. Black Lives Matter. Science is real. That means only evolution. Um, and uh, they have a little thing that the kids can click on the page where they can report a hater directly to the Southern Poverty Law Center. So if their teacher says, I'm just really uncomfortable, I'm a man and I'm you know, watching the boys locker room and a girl wants to come in and shower, which by the way, the teachers unions and the PTA are the ones who pushed for the transgender locker rooms. Um, so I don't wanna monitor a girl. Oh, you're a hater. So then that teacher can be reported as a hater as can children, next slide. Uh, this is the teachers, what the teachers unions do when they gather. I witnessed this with my own eyes last summer in Minneapolis, NEA national meeting. First thing they did was they went out and marched. What were they marching about? Four sanctuary cities. If you're a teacher, you are funding the fight against our president and you are funding sanctuary cities. CTA is in the crowd there. Next slide. We are also fighting teachers to abolish ICE. And that little girl on the right there is what breaks my heart the most. Any great teacher knows we teach children to love, to, to honor, to follow the golden rule, to respect authority. But the teachers unions teach our students to flip off the president of the United States. How dare they? It's disgusting. Next slide, please. This is David Hogg, the leader of um, March for Our Lives. You know who he is. Well, did you know that it was the teachers unions that inspired, funded, organized March for Our Lives? They used David Hogg as the face. And this past year, he was the opening speaker at their annual meeting. But that's not half as bad as the next thing they did. So the teachers unions give a, a large award called the President's Award. It's their most coveted award. They should be giving it to an amazing teacher who, I don't know, adopts her own students or does some other incredible thing. Next slide. They gave it to Colin Kaepernick this year. And then teacher union leaders took a knee during the national anthem. Next slide. Teachers unions, uh, when we took our case to the Supreme Court, as Jen told you, ours ended up in a tie because of Scalia's death. But another case came behind our case called Janice. And during Janice oral arguments, the teachers union uh, attorneys actually threatened the United States Supreme Court justices. This is what he said. He told them that if employees were freed from forced union fees, unions will, quote, raise an untold specter of union unrest throughout the country because union security is the trade-off for no strikes. An outright threat. Next slide. And then they started Red for Ed. Red for Ed teacher strikes all across the country are not about making more money for teachers or lowering class sizes or taking care of kids. It's a shakedown by the unions and it's a temper tantrum because they lost at the United States Supreme Court on June 27th, 2018. And now all public sector employees are free to pay them nothing. So I told you what real teachers are like. Real teachers are McGuffey readers. Real teachers are loving. 
We work so hard with those blessed little kids. We care so much about them. But these ladies, the one on the left, is a leader of Red for Ed teacher strikes. She has a nice hickey on her neck, and she's helping to lead the hashtag not my president, and she's flipping us off. That is not a teacher. That is an activist masquerading as a teacher. Next slide. So this is one of my favorite quotes. We used to teach it in our schools before the unions removed our great literature. And Henry David Thoreau said it. There are thousands hacking at the branches of evil to one who is striking at the root. My call to you today is, will you please help me strike at the root? Because the root cause of every single problem in this country, this state, in our classrooms, in our, our loss of values, all of it, it's the teachers' unions and the other government unions. So help me strike. Next slide. Strike at that root, please. Here's what teachers pay. Sword, uh, most teachers pay about $1,000 a year in dues. Look at where it goes. The state teachers' union gets 700 the national gets 192 Their local keeps only about 100 bucks. But teachers think that they keep it all at the local level. The local level does all the work. Help me educate teachers. Next slide. Uh, this is just about how much money the unions bring in every year, close to $5 billion tax-free. Next slide. And uh, like I told you, we now have the freedom to leave. Teachers can now opt out of the union and pay them nothing. Next, yeah. But there's a problem. Teachers don't know that. The unions have lied to them and bullied them. We are getting bullied worse than ever since this Supreme Court win. So I, here's your homework. Your homework is adopt every teacher you know. If you go to church or synagogue, adopt the teachers there and invite me to come speak to them, please. Adopt, adopt, adopt. Educate. Get them a copy of my book. We have copies here. They're also online. They're on Audible. They're on everything. We've made it easy for you. Take one of our adopt a teacher flyers. It teaches you on the back. It'll take you three minutes to read how to adopt them because they're not leaving the union because they think the union is helping them. It's not. It's destroying the classroom in so many ways. And the book is full of personal testimonies of about 50 different people proving that. Very quickly, did you know that the teachers unions organize, advertise, fund the Women's March, Black Lives Matter, Antifa? Did you know Antifa shows up for the teacher union strikes? Did you know that they're leading the attacks on our president? Did you know that they're leading these totalitarian attacks, labeling all of us homophobe and bigots and everything else? Union activists are masquerading as teachers. They are not teachers. Next slide. Um, and can you go to the last, last slide, please? We started an organization called For Kids in Country. It's 501c3. If you want to help us fight this, we love your help. You can make donation to us. Um, but I want to end by encouraging those here who are people of faith, particularly the pastors and synagogue leaders in the room, it's from Joshua 1.9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. These unions have bullied us. They have silenced us. They have robbed us of our values that created the greatest country in the history of the world. And they will destroy us if we don't fight back. So I'm asking you to do your homework. Get an A. Adopt teachers, help them out of unions, and fight with me, please. Thank you.